Hey there, I am very excited to talk today about um, using action strings to in Dorico because it brings together two tools that I uh, enjoy using and I think answers a lot of technical problems, a lot of technical questions that have applications to a whole lot of virtual instruments for anybody working in Dorico. Now Dorico is a notation program I personally love using it. I think it's. Uh, I think it, it it makes notation pretty fun for me. Um, but I have this huge collection of instruments that are really designed to, like native instruments, uh, orchestral tools. They're really designed sign player and contact to be used in like a DAW. Dorico certainly is, is is capable of supporting them, and it wasn't always clear what that workflow would be. So I'm hoping to talk about it here because I want to break down the steps of how to set this up, how it works. It was not intuitive to me exactly, but I have worked it out and I'm very happy with the result. So let me, um, Tarek, turn to this example here. And I'm just gonna play this back here and you can hear how it sounds. Now what you'll see here is you'll see some, uh, there's main theme, variation, variation two, and variation three. And you'll see down here in um, action strings, there's main variation one, two, and three. And you see when it plays back, it's actually triggering those patterns. So we see like pattern one, that's the main theme. Then we go to variation one, etc. So, sorry, let me stop that. So, um, I'm going to explain how this works, uh, but first I just want to explain why I use action strings at all. Okay, so it's a very fast way to come up with ostinati for my hybrid and trailers type orchestral work. There's a lot of good stuff in there, but it goes beyond just being easy to use, um, kind of like a, a quick prefab way to put things together. When you compose, uh, you know, this like larger than life type trailer orchestral music, you need to layer a lot of, uh, say, in this case, violins, you know, and violas and cellos and basses. You need to layer a lot of them to get this like over the top sound, right? This really big sound. Action Strings, they did that. So they've already sampled a, a, a huge orchestra playing these. So it's not just... Um, the patterns. It's also that with each stroke of the bow, you are getting, you know, a, a bunch of different string instruments coming at you. The uh, uh, samples have seven round robins, so you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of authenticity there. It's a good sample library. You know, it's not going to be that great for things outside its purpose, like, you know, long flowing legato lines on some brittle uh, violin melody. It's not good for that. But for this kind of like choppy, uh, powerful, energetic ostinati, it's great. And there's also coding in the back end of action strings that um, looks at the, uh, the way in which the different modules, the different patterns are flowing in, in the... Um, interface down here uh, and it sort of does some auto magic in the background to create the most lifelike uh, performance so that helps plus a lot of the modules for these different patterns were actually recorded as modules right so they actually recorded as phrases in different pitches with round robins it's not just single articulation samples being fired one after another it's actually a phrase so it, there's actually a lot of realism in there that's worth considering seriously even if you um even if you're very capable of notating your own ostinati you're going to get the layering taken care of here you're going to get the actual phrase sounds more realistic here and there are single articulations although i'm not going into that today. So you can use single articulations if you want to. Um, so let me tell you that how, how this works, how I got this set up um, in, in an overview, right? Because I'm not going to cover every detail today. There's a lot here. And I'm actually going to do it over a series of live streams because it's just too overwhelming, I think, for people to watch and make sense of in one video. 
So please come back and, uh, and check them out. I will say at this point, if you have questions or things about either Action Strings or Dorico related to this topic that you'd like me to cover, put it in the comments and I'll address it when I come to the upcoming uh, episodes in the next few weeks. So here's basically how it works. And I've got some notes here that I have to kind of read. Um, okay, so you set up instruments. You can set up your own custom instruments in Dorico. You know, obviously it comes with the normal ones like flute and cello and all that stuff. You can create an instrument called Action Strings 2. And then you can create what are called playing techniques and playback techniques. Playing techniques are what you'd write in a score, like I have main theme actually written there in the score. You might have pizzicato or things that are in the score that a player would read and it would tell them what to do. Playback techniques, on the other hand, which are different from playing techniques, playback techniques are basically configurations in the background. What does the computer do with that information, right? So the playing technique is what do you see on the score. Playback technique is usually like a key switch. Well, what, what key switch do I do, right? So you've got the instrument and you've got some playing techniques you can write on your score and you've got some playback techniques like key switches. You bundle all of that stuff together into what's called an expression map. An expression map says which key switches go with which playing techniques. Then you create something called an endpoint, and an endpoint basically um, connects the instrument with uh, your expression map, so that when you load uh, Action Strings 2 into Dorico, you can uh, create an endpoint that says, anytime I load this instrument, load this expression map, because this is the expression map that I like to use that relate all the key switches and playing techniques, right? So then you've got your, that's your endpoints. Then you assemble all these endpoints, so all these bundles of instruments and playing techniques uh, into something called a playback template. And the playback template is a really great option. It's a very, it's a, it's a very fast way to load all of your presets over whatever instruments you've got. So you can load in, say, all of your staffs, all your staves. You've got your, you know, your brass staves and your strings and all this. You've got your individual instruments there in your ensemble. You load a playback template and it goes through and it finds the right instrument to load for them, all the expression maps that you've said in the past you'd like to load for them. So a playback template is like a quick way to say, you know what, Dorico, just get my whole ensemble here aligned the way that I like it. And I'm going to show you how to do all of that, but we're going to take it step by step over the next several um over the next several, uh, oh, sorry, my I'm, I'm talking pretty fast here, over the next several live streams. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped you if you are kind of like a self-starter. Now you know what to look for. It's instruments, playing techniques, playback techniques, expression maps, endpoint configurations, bundle it all into a playback template. But if you need tutorials step-by-step, step, that's what I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks. A couple weeks, maybe, however long it takes, I might might finish it uh, a little bit after Thanksgiving. Uh, if you have any comments, please leave them. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Please like and subscribe. It really helps me surface my channel uh, to the rest of the world. I'm trying to grow this channel to um, be a large community of people who do this kind of stuff that I do. And I'm totally uh, willing to engage as well. So please leave stuff in the comments that I can respond to. And I will see you next time. And we will dive into setting up instruments, playing techniques, and playback techniques next time. All right, bye for now.